I'm going to be using the Stillman Burn Zeta Series extra heavyweight paper in a 9 by 12 size. And it has a black cover with a spiral bind to it so that the pages lay flat. I already have started. The first page is primed with the Zinsser and gray. And I have studies in here from this past year of Zoom, John Singer Sargent, Lillian Gint. Studies by Gerhardt's is peonies or peonies. Um, some fruit. Alexander Quister's ducks or Cooster. And uh, TC Steel. And Waterhouse. And so I'll begin, and I've some of these pages stuck together, so I've got a damaged page here. So it looks like I'll have to skip that and go ahead and zinzer this next page. You notice the paper is heavy enough that it doesn't buckle. And typically I keep some wax paper between these pages to keep them from sticking because the paint does take a while to dry. You could also do pastel on these pages by using a pastel ground like Golden's pastel uh, uh, ground. It's clear. You could add a little bit of acrylic or you could go ahead and paint the page with some Zinsser and acrylic paint. I'm going to use be using green for this and if you wanted it for pastel you could just add the gritty pastel ground to that to give it some tooth but I'll just be using oil paint so I'm going to use the Zinsser ground and prepare the page. Okay so I uh, do not have the green I want so I'm just using some acrylic blue and yellow and I mixed up a green that leans more toward the bluish side. That yellow I put quite a bit in, but this is good enough. And I'm gonna mix some of the Bullseye 123 primer in with this and go ahead and coat the whole page. I'm gonna just brush it on both ways. This paper is so smooth that it really doesn't give you much tooth. And so when I apply the primer, I like to put it on both ways. It kind of mimics the, the weave of canvas a little bit. I do want to make sure if I'm coating a board um, or, or a um, sketchbook like this, I want to make sure I don't have any strong brush strokes right across where the face would go. Or, and it dries really super fast, so you have to work kind of fast. I did notice where I kind of piled up the the thickness that the pages, if I don't watch it, the pages stick together and then I have a problem later. So just make sure that you check your pages that are behind. And it will start to buckle a little. So I'm gonna let it dry and then I'm gonna do another coat the opposite direction. You can work on a white surface. That's totally up to you. And I'm gonna go ahead and put this second coat on, again, brushing it in the opposite direction. The Having a under painting or tone just helps um, two things for me. It helps the paint go on a little better, um, sit on the top of the surface a little more longer because it fills in the absorbency of the paper or the wood or the canvas. And that helps um, the paint move around a little better for me. Um, I'm painting this pretty solid. I don't usually do that, but that's okay. And I chose this green color because the painting has lots, and actually I would rather have had it a little bit more blue-green, but that's okay. I could go ahead and just brush mix a little bit more blue in here. Let's see what happens with that. Yeah, that'll work. That just helps um, any, you know, if I paint in a thin a la prima manner, which we're only gonna take two, two weeks for this, so that's possible. Some of this can uh, show through and it kind of propels you forward a lot quicker with your painting because you don't have all these white spots glowing through. Now, if I had lots of um, areas that I wanted to be really lit, 
I would be careful and, and maybe use the white because sometimes the white glows a little better through the canvas or through the paint. So I've gone back and forth both directions and given myself a little bit more of a blue-green color. Look at the painting yourself and decide what, what seems to be the mother color that's glowing through and kind of dancing around the painting and holding it all together. The faces are gonna be right in this area, so I wanna make sure that it, there's not any big streaks that will be distracting on the face there. This is an impressionist painting, so I don't have to worry too much. It's gonna be loose, rather loose. So there you go. It's a little dark. <clears throat> middle tone to middle light is good for my, um, my tone. But this is okay because I'm gonna, I'm gonna paint over most of it. We'll lay this flat to dry as I have um, left it upright for you to see the demonstration, but the page will, will dry a little bit better if I lay. All right, so I have my primed page with a Zinser and acrylic paint, a little dark, but it's okay. And the facing page in this Stillman Burn sketchbook, I'm going to use, it's got a little tear on it, but I'm going to use it as um, my rough draft. And I like to do a quick value study just to um, lay in the gesture and the three main values. So I'm going to do that really quick. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is decide how large on the canvas that I want this both figures to be. And this is a long, skinny um, composition, so it's going to end up being right here in the middle of the page, which is fine. We have plenty of room to do it that way. If we were going to do this on a canvas, we would want to um, uh, have a long, skinny canvas, or we'd have to figure out what to do on those sides or vignette it. So... That's always a consideration when you're laying out your composition. So usually I would stop and measure to see how many heads tall, but I'm not right now. I'm going to just do a kind of a quick gesture. Um, I will look and see the width versus the height. And it's not quite uh, at its widest point. It's not quite two of those tall. So <clears throat> if I'm measuring... So for my rough draft, um, I've made a couple of observations. I, I try to decide about where the center of the, of the page would be. And I keep a bamboo skewer to measure with. I break the tip off of it. And I'm a little bit low there. So that's about the center of my page. And that helps me a lot to know where the center is. Uh, on my image, the center is right at the base of her skirt. And you can see that on the, um, on the screen here. The center is right here. And so that helps me to just have an idea of where I'm going and where everything should fall. Uh, the center, both width-wise and height-wise, is right here at that little uh, intersection of her skirt. So um, I can also look at... The plumb line in her face is right along in here. So I can go ahead and do a rough, rough draft, just a value study of the heads and the hat. The hat is two big circles. Her hat, maybe scoot that over just a tad. I don't want to go any higher than my mark that I made here and for the feet there. And then just kind of matching my angles. Her bodice is just a triangular shape like this. And then her skirt. Again, just thinking about the simple shapes. I do not want to draw any details. And then this big bell shape here. And that's it for her. I don't want to do anything else. Now for the man, we've got this big, dark, negative space shape right here between her arm. And that's all I really want to look at is that negative space. Uh, his hat, the hand comes out 
a bit here. So I'm not going to draw any detail for the hand. His arm back here. His arm, his elbow comes just about that far. So I don't want to go too far with his elbow. Right, right under her. It's even with just above her waistline here. Okay. And then this big dark shape of his suit, which wraps around below this. The leg is a big dark shape, and the cuff of his pants along the bottom ends about right there. Another foot here, and that's it. So I could go ahead and mask this big dark shape in, mask this dark shape in, and mask this dark shape in. Uh, her head and hat are pretty dark, and I'll have to squint to really see that. Or a middle tone, not quite as dark as his suit. Wraps around here. All right, so that's my little quick gesture drawing, but that's going to help because that gives me, and I can continue to refine that a little bit, but that gives me an idea of how it's going to lay on this page. Uh, it's a little wide, it's a little big, so um, when I move over here, I'm going to want to be a little more careful with my drawing. Drawings have a tendency to get larger. So I'm going to start maybe a little smaller. So the feet here, the top of the hat here, and then I'm going to measure uh, height to width and make a few marks. So I divided the canvas into, in, or divided my, um, my area. This is the height and this is the width. I decided that ahead of time. You can make that as small as you want or you could make it all the way out, but I'm going to leave some space above the hat. So I, I put two marks and then I divided that in half and then the width is exactly the same as the height. So this is my little cocoon that I have to keep the entire drawing within those, those uh, guidelines. Consideration is how many heads tall they are, and that'll give me a real good um, idea of where to place things as I move. So her, she is five and three quarter heads tall. Her head is her top of her hat, and I'm measuring from top of her hat to her chin, is a little smaller than his head. So top of hat to bottom of chin bottom of his chin almost to the top of his hat. So I want to consider that. I want to drop the top of her head down just a little. Not sure where to place this head in relation to the width yet, but I'm going to go ahead and see if I can divide this into five and three quarters heads. I have to guess the first time. So one, two, three, four, five, and a half, so it needs to be a little bit smaller. One, two, three, four, five, three quarters. And it might maybe just a bit bigger than that, just a bit, somewhere in between. So sometimes I have to do that several times to get that right. And I can just use this piece of charcoal. It's long enough to do that. Three quarters. So that's about right. Um, and he's, his head is a little larger than hers. So I'm going to come over here. And the top of his hat, a little larger than hers. So the top of his hat to his chin. 
top of hat to chin. And he is five and a third, maybe between a third and a half. So one, two, three, four, five, and a third. He's a little lower than her dress. Let's do that again. One, make sure it's a little bigger, yep. One, two, three, four, five, and about a third. So that's about right. So that, I know that's confusing because I've made, I've measured both figures, but we're doing two figures here and we've got to make them the right amount of space in between with the negative space here. I can also go back and look at this line here and see what lines up with that center line. And I can, if, if it's easier for you, you can draw a plumb line on here. So let me make sure I've got the middle mark here. Right here is the middle. <clears throat> and you can see on, on the original that her, the side of her face lines up. About there. All right, so I know that's a little confusing to start with, but I promise you if you spend a little bit of time on the front end of this, it will save you so much in corrections. Um, double check it again. The center line of the whole painting runs right through her face. Her face is going to overlap that just a little bit. Then you can kind of start from the center and work your way out. Now, a lot of people would go ahead and just start laying some paint down and not really spend all this time on the drawing. But uh, if you don't have an accurate drawing, you're gonna fight with this the whole time. So I prefer to get a little bit of the drawing in so that I can uh, make sure it's pretty accurate and I'm not working myself to death trying to get an accurate drawing. Um, I'm not drawing any details. I'm just looking at this negative space right here between their two chins. I want to make sure I get that little triangular shape in there first. And that's going to carry me and be an anchor for the rest of the, the painting. Um, again, this seems tedious to a lot of people. There's a little bit of space between their faces. But if you start doing a head and another head and then you try to draw the whole thing, you're going to find that they're not the right amount of space apart. We can use plumb lines all the way down the entire painting. Uh, these small heads are going to be a challenge. So the top of her hat to her bangs is, no nope, mid forehead. Top of her hat to mid forehead is the halfway mark on her. So the hat's way up here. <clears throat> this is mid forehead, which means her, her face is going to have to fit in this little tiny area. It's going to be challenging. This is um, a small area to work in. His halfway mark. I'm going to say is now the camera's looking at it at a little different angle somewhere here in the middle of that hat maybe about where his eyebrows would be uh, we're seeing the top of his hat so it may be helpful to to go ahead and draw that in the hat um, if we're, we're thinking about her face going this way, remember there's got to be some space from her face to the beginning of his hat. So that gives me a good idea of where this hat will go. And you could start out with a quick centrifugal uh, motion type of a circle, but I would move to a more angular drawing pretty quick. And you see how I'm going over my, my line here, so I've got to watch that. This should be the top of his hat. So I'm already out of whack a little bit there. 
top of his head. That's why the, um, the vine charcoal works so beautifully because you can just wipe it off. I could also check, you know, measuring, measure, measure, measure. What is the width of that hat compared to what? It's one, of, it's her head length. So I know I've got to keep that hat, let's see, right in this area. So the, the width of the hat is only this wide. <clears throat> and the height of it is this wide. This is going to be tricky. Don't get discouraged. It's good for us to be, to have to work all this stuff out. Very good for us. There's like a cone on the top of his head here. Reminds me a little bit of Van Gogh and the type of hat he wore. Yellow, the yellow colors. his neck. I can see these angles pretty strongly. I can see this little area here that I want to mimic. And I got to make sure I have from his nose to the back of his neck is the same as her face. So nose to the back of his neck. This will come back a little further. So I'm still retaining this little diamond shape right here in between the two, and that's going to be key. Um, her dress extends down. Her arm is about there. It's easier to make small increments as you measure. Uh, whether I do these people in the background, I, I probably won't because they're the main thing and that's the study is of those two. Now, I know this is part of the hat. Um, I can check the width of, she's got some fruit or something on her hat. So let me check the complete width from the grapes to the back of his hat and see what that corresponds to if anything yet, top of her hat to her, just about to the bottom of her arm. Or let's see how many heads wide that is. One and three quarter heads wide. So one and three quarters heads wide. So that's about right. The fruit will be right in here. little bitty head good grief and I have a I also have a charcoal woodless charcoal pencil that I can sharpen and get in there for some details I'll do that with paint so I'm really not going to worry too much I'm just going to make a place for the features go um, I can check the plumb line of her back and see that comes right up here which is about right she's tiny so we don't want to make her too wide and then this arm cuts. Actually, there's two angles. It goes this way and then this way. This way and then this way. Remember, remember where your halfway mark is. So we've got um, from the arm here. From her chin to the bottom of her arm is the same as from her chin to just above where the hat goes. So chin to bottom of arm. It's about right here, yep. <clears throat> Her waistline comes straight up from just inside his chin. Uh, 
and then we know that the top of this little ruffle is just above the halfway mark. In the center where the little seam is. So that kind of gives you an idea here if you've got this wide enough, this little spot here. I promise you finding the halfway mark is a huge blessing. It helps you so much. Um, the angle of this, I can make it a little straighter than it really will be in the end. A little bit of a, that may be too wide. Goodness, there's a lot to fit in this little skinny space. I can check how wide her waist is. Uh, it's the same as from her chin almost to the top of her hat. So look, she's got a tiny waist. Don't let it get too wide. His hand is smack dab here on her waist. And don't draw any fingers, just draw the pad of the hand. There we go. It's a little bit of his sleeve back there too. Now the front of her dress, let's check it with the plumb line and it comes right about where his ear would be. So that's probably about right. <clears throat> Don't forget this big dark spot here. Um, comes up under his chin and across here. Go ahead and mask that in. She has a tiny arm. You can really see a lot better uh, this line goes this way, and then this wraps around the back of his neck. Her hand is back here. Actually, maybe a little higher. Her sleeve is right here at the bend of her elbow. Bend of her elbow. And I can see how much space. I don't have quite enough space between. Uh, let's see her chin. His chin is a little higher. And then their hands together are right here. And they come just out from here. So they, they come almost to the end, but not. So we don't want to leave a little bit of space where these hands go. So that's going to be tricky. Shoulder. His elbow comes right along in here. I don't want to go any further down. Doing that rough draft does really help. Elbow, here's his suit. It's kind of hard to tell, but the suit kind of comes down like this. If we wrap the edge around, it would come down here somewhere. Go ahead and finish out her dress here. Um, here's the halfway line. If you want to draw that, that might be helpful to you to see how much space. <coughs> From this ruffle to the second ruffle is the same as on the top of her bonnet down to her V-line. So that's about right. Got a bustle here on the back of her gown. You can see how close all that is. And a 
dress runs off the page. Her foot is just over from the center line. And his foot Got enough room for this leg in here, just barely. There's a feeling of movement here, so if you don't get these legs right, if you just kind of attach them on, they're going to look funny. All right. So I'll step away. That's my first stab at it and go get a cup of coffee or some tea and come back and look at it in a few minutes. It looks kind of short and squat. So I know I have some adjustments. So I got away from it and came back out, sharpened my charcoal pencil with, um, ended up using a hand sharpener because my electric one I've worked with for, I don't know how long, trying to get the little piece out that was stuck in it. But this worked pretty good because these faces are small, so small that you really need a sharp point to get down in there and do a little bit of detail on them. You see that I didn't really do a lot of detail. I think one of the key things is the angle of her, of her features. And I don't have the, I have them like this, and I think they need to be more like this. Um, so that's the first thing I see right off the bat. I masked in. I checked plumb lines, the front of his foot. Um, all the way up to see what that coincided with and it comes right up along the side of his mustache so I'm pretty close there um, a little bit off maybe uh, I can see that the tip of his foot comes right close to that halfway line that's where your halfway marks are going to help you a lot here and straight up through here checking those those uh see what what it ends up being plumb so get as close as you can. This is about the drawing because we want it, we want it to look like Renoir's painting. So we don't want it to be too far off. I think I have her back a little too thick right here because again, she's tiny. And um, I could probably come in, you know, look for rhythms. So around the ear, you kind of have a rhythm here. I think I could bring that back in like that and make that more I could keep looking at this for a while and continue to make corrections. If you have something too wide, it will automatically look too short, like it's squashed. And so anytime things are wide, they look too short. But a lot of times when you just skinny things up, you'll see, um, quickly see a change. And I can see that, that tilt of her um, I'm using this charcoal, too, that's in the little charcoal holder. That comes in kind of handy. But see, her waist is tiny, so make sure you get that feeling of her true size here and not, don't get it too out of whack here. This is a lot softer charcoal as well. See, that gives her that little tiny waist here and a smaller bodice. Um, make sure her arms aren't too thick. <clears throat> okay, so I think I'm gonna I'm ready to start mixing some color. Spend the amount of time you need to to check. You see, I've got all the the value studies pulled up on the computer, and the <clears throat> the quick rough in with my um, really just two values on there. But I could take it further. The dress is a is more of a middle tone. This is a dark, and I could go ahead and work out the three values with the paper here. I only have two values as well. Okay, so I have a paper towel in my hand, um, and I've got a selection of palette knives out here. I like a small palette knife, and I usually try to talk about this for a few minutes on all my videos because I find that it makes smaller little piles of paint. I do like to pre-mix my piles so that I'm not struggling with color and all over the place. Um, these Sometimes I forget to clean these, and so you can simply take another palette knife and just scrape any dried paint. You don't need any extra obstacles when you're painting. So 
um, there's that. I do have a clean one. So, and I'm starting with a fresh palette. I'm using a glass shadow box with a gray piece of paper underneath it so that I have a mid-tone, especially since I'm using a mid to dark tone on my canvas. Um, I can gauge my colors more easily. I have a selection of colors out here, but I'm only using for this painting Cad Yellow Light, Cad Red Medium, which I have three or four reds out. I have Scarlet, Cad Red Light, Quinacridone Red, and Alizarin. And I'm looking for a Fire Engine Red, just a flat primary red. And I do not have any Cad Red Medium, which is the closest thing to that. So I'm going to use a little bit of the Scarlet and the Quinacridone to get a more middle tone red. And that's what I'm looking for. It's not too yellow and not too blue, but right in the middle. So that's whatever you have in your paint box that is a primary red that is not too blue or not too yellow, because those are the two directions that the reds lean in. That's the red I'm using, and then the blue I'm using is ultramarine blue. If all you have is thalo blue, that's fine as well. Um, you can just make that work. So red, blue, and yellow. I've squeezed titanium white. I try to, my tube is almost dry, so I had trouble getting it out, but I try to squeeze that in a long line so that when I pull off the ends of the white, I can keep from contaminating it. It's great while you're mixing color to use an old phone book that you can just stick your palette knife in and, and clean the pages or a paper towel. So the first thing I'm going to look at is, is the general color of my background. And it's a blue-green mixture. Um, I already have some green mixed up, but this is simply Cad Yellow Light and Ultramarine Blue mixed together. I always start with the lightest light and add the darker color to it gradually. So you can see how yellow that is. <clears throat> this has more blue in it. I don't see any of that. I see some yellowish in the top up there, but mostly I see a blue-green color. There we go. So now if I wanna lighten that, <clears throat> I simply add, I can, I can make it a bit bluer on one end of the spectrum. And I can pull out on the other end and add some white to get a little bit lighter. Right here. That's a little too light. Pull a little bit of this out. But I do see that up in the, in the sky behind the two. Looks like they're out in an outdoor party. All right, so that's about really all I want to do for the background. It is a, a quite yellow down at the bottom, and it's a bit of a yellow ochre color. You see that in her belt. I see it on the ground. Um, probably his hat is not a yellow ochre color, but his beard and her hair has a kind of a raw sienna color in it. And we know that raw sienna and yellow ochre is simply yellow with a little blue and red in it. So I'll go ahead and mix up a purplish color. That's a small amount. I'm not going to be using a whole lot of the raw sienna type color. And I'll go ahead and mix up a little bit more red in it because if it's too blue, it'll make yellow and, and blue make green. So I'm going to put more red in it, and then I'm going to get a little yellow. Let's see if we can make a raw sienna yellow ochre color. Yeah. A little more yellow. Great. So purple and yellow makes a more of a raw sienna yellow ochre color for the ground. If you want to lighten that a little, just put a little white with it. And that's really close to what his hat's going to be as well. <clears throat> now his suit is just simply ultramarine blue. And the, the jacket has more blue, maybe just pure blue, with a tiny bit of red in it. 
Whoops, I said a tiny bit. We, we'll save that. Yep. And then his pants lean a little to the greenish side. They're not pure. See how pure ultramarine blue is just to Easter egg. So since I have this green mixed up, I'm just going to pull a little bit of this green over in here. There we go. And that's exactly what I see. So we only have three colors to choose. Yellow, red, and blue to make the whole painting. So it's, it's going to be a lot simpler than you imagined. Now on the dress, I'm not going to paint any of the lightest lights that I see. I'm simply going to block it in in a much darker value so that, that I can scumble that light over the top. So since I have purple already mixed up, I'm going to start with white. And I'm going to add some ultramarine. I'm going to leave that pile because I want to save that for his suit. I'm going to mix some blue and some red. over here and I'm going to go two ways with it. I'm going to make a redder version of the dress and a bluer version. I'm going to go a lot darker than I intend to go and that's just a solid lavender right there so we're going to have to tweak it and mix a little bit more blue in this side. Now you can definitely see the difference. And a little more red in part of that. Whoops, it's a lot more red, but that's okay. So you see I've really got um, almost a pinkish lavender here. A middle tone lavender and then a bluish lavender for the dress and there's probably a little green in there as well there's a lot of colors when you paint white you really have to pay attention to the surrounding atmosphere because all those colors are going to reflect up into your white the only thing left now is her red bonnet and it is really a since we're only using the primary red We'll mix up a little bit of yellow with it. I'm not going to go into my cad yellow light. But you see when you mix that, you get a cad yellow light. And then just red. If your red is too red, the opposite of red is green on the color wheel. So for the shadowed areas in there, we might mix a little green in there just to get it darker. So that should be enough for her bonnet. And her the skin tones are very, very fair. And I always ask myself, are they yellowish, pinkish, or orange? And it's hard to tell with her. Of course, the cheeks are pink, pinkish because of her red bonnet. But I'm just going to mix up a little bit yellow. Um, all skin tone falls in the yellow or red family. So I'm going to start with white, put a little yellow in it. It's kind of a dirty yellow, but that's okay. And let's go over here to my little cad red mi mixture I've made. Oops, that might be some cheek color. There we go. Red and yellow. Now, when you mix up your skin tone and it feels too Easter egg, then on your red side, you might mix a little green because green is the opposite. And because his jacket is so blue and shining into the side of her face, I might mix a little bit of this blue-green in to get my shadow tone. I'm doing a really small pile of that, but see how that makes a nice shadow tone for the edge of her face. On the orange, I might just put a speck of blue, and on the yellow, I might put a speck of purple. 
just to tone it down. Barely, barely tone it down. A little bit of purple. And so that gives me a duller version and a brighter version of each color. The orange I could put just a speck of blue with. I could be a little bit less frugal with the paint here. But, oh, that was too much. But you see how the, you can get those nice shadows by just mixing the opposite on the color wheel. Unless, of course, you, you know, you've got a pink cheek and you've got a blue jacket right next to it. You're going to want to make your, the green a bluish green so that it's more harmonious. So this is the palette. This is what I'll be using. And I'm just simply going to block in the colors in very thin uh, in a very thin manner, the, the images that I have to work from, and the they're different. You can notice when you um, when you look online and you find these images, the higher resolution ones, of course, are usually better, but the color's not always. So I'm looking at the difference in this one. There's a lot more pink in the cheeks. There's a lot more pink in the dress in his fingers. Uh, this one is more of a middle tone, which is probably more accurate. A lot of times cameras will, especially a Canon camera, will add more pink. And this one is a higher resolution image, so you can see the brushwork. You can zoom in on it a lot more. So you can see, um, you can see a lot more as far as detail goes. If you wanted, when you get ready to start working on the detail, you can see it a lot better. Um, so I have to make a decision, which one am I going to look at while I'm painting? Because no matter how hard you try, if you have a weird color, you're going to, your brain is going to try to reproduce that color. So I'll leave these up. I'm probably going to stick with this middle one. Seems more accurate to me, even though I always like more pink in everything that I do or more color. The other thing I want to do is because I've used a lot of charcoal here is I want to just knock this drawing down a little so that I don't have all that charcoal mixing in with my paint. I haven't lost my drawing. I just softened up the charcoal a bit. I'm working out here in the studio, and so the light is going to be changing throughout the day. It is right at 12 noon, and I had a lot of sun coming in this morning, so I have had to change uh, so lighting is a big deal. So try to stay consistent with your lighting. I'm using, um, because this is a 9 by 12 tiny little heads about the size of a quarter, I'm going to be using some small filberts. These are rosemary size 2 ivory filberts, and then I have a soft size 2. The, actually, this is a size 4 and a little softer in case I need that. And I may switch to something else. I did get a little larger brush because the background area, I want to go ahead and mask that in real quickly. Uh, so I got a, a flat, about a number four flat. And I always swish in mineral spirits, but I try to keep my mineral spirits closed so the vapors aren't, aren't uh, coming out in the studio. And I always have a little brush cleaner, so I wanted to make sure I clean up my brush cleaner. Um, and just going to mask in, and look, that's really super dark. So... That bluish color that I mixed for the background, blue-green, is a little too dark. There we go. Um, simply want to get everything covered today. So I'm looking at the clock. It is 12.15, and I want to give myself about 30 minutes to quickly mask this in without a lot of piddling. I do work in an overlapping method, so I want to, I'm not going to paint the people in the background, so um, I want to bring my paint lines just a little in over the drawing lines. Don't get too attached to your drawing. Go ahead and let some of the lines overlap. And I asked myself, you know, Renoir did uh, what was in front of him. Her dress is warm. His suit is very cool. So the background is an outdoor setting of both warms and cools. 
not really much warms. It's almost all cools. The warmth comes on the, on the ground. And since I already have that green, I don't have to work too hard to, to get some nice color in there. I, I grabbed a little bit of that lavender because I don't want it to be too drab. And there's a tree over on that side that's got kind of a lavender gray just to make it kind of interesting. And of course, there's going to be some bright yellow flourishes in here as well. But just um, Shirley used to tell us to do little X's and look at your look at your canvas and the size that you're covering to determine what size brush you need. Try not to work yourself to death with a small brush. Try to use a, a larger brush. Now I'm going to grab a little yellow and white, a little cad yellow and white mixture and just kind of brush mix that right on the canvas just to go ahead and add a few little touches of light up here. It's kind of eating it up, so I may wait till it dries. As I move down to the bottom here, it's a little darker. The green is a little bit darker. And it'll make that white dress show up better to have it a little bit darker. And just a reminder, my perimeter lines were right here. So I really don't have to come out much wider. Let's let this be the main focus of, of the exercise today. All right, it's very yellow down here. <clears throat> very yellow on the, on the ground in the foreground here. And because I coated this, um, uh, Stillman Burn sketchbook page really well. My paint's laying on top pretty pretty nicely. It's not soaking up really bad. I like a little bit of light in this foreground here. And Shirley, again, Shirley used to tell us to use X's just to get a more painterly. I think that was just a way to get us to loosen up and not be so stiff with our painting. Uh, it's quite cool under his elbow here, so I've wiped my brush. Uh, keep a paper towel in your hand all the time. Don't, don't muddy up your colors. Um, and you'll notice that the charcoal pretty much mixes right in with the paint, and so you don't have to worry too much about that. That's another reason I like it so much. Uh, there's a little transition between the yellow and blue right here. Wiping my brush. A little bit of a lavenderish color down here, but it gets lighter. Overlap. Don't go right up to the edge. Don't be afraid and don't try to color it like you're in a coloring book. Try to be free to lose these edges and not, not worry about it too much. I don't like that too much. I'm going to just paint that back in. Okay. So, um, that was about four minutes to get some of that background covered. And I may adjust it as needed. I don't really like things to be wider at the top. They feel top heavy. So let me go ahead and extend my vignette out a little bit down here. so I don't have it boxed in. It doesn't feel top heavy. There we go. Your background, the old masters would make sure their backgrounds didn't shine brighter than their subjects. So don't worry about your background too much. There's a little bit of pretty blue color in there that I do not have. So let me see if I can mix a little bit more of this blue before I move on and start covering the subjects. No, it's not really registering. I can go back and add that later.
gives it a happier feeling. If it's a drab blue, it looks stormy. I've already kind of muddied it up. So, all right, I'm switching to another brush. Uh, so you ask yourself, do I want to work on the hats and hair, the skin tones, or the clothing? So I have three choices. Most of the time, uh, thinking about what came first is um, kind of a common sense thing for me. So their skin is underneath all of that. So I think I will go ahead with my smaller filbert and just mass in some of the skin tones. Um, they're going to be really bright against this dark tone of this canvas. So I can remember how I mix the shadow colors, the purple and the yellowish, the orange and the bluish, and the red and the blue greenish. Um, and I'm gonna grab some of these more shadowed skin tones first. And in studying the old masters, Daniel Green did quite a bit of study uh, in the Metropolitan Museum of Art, he took swatches in, and he noted that many of the old masters painted the women very pink, pinks and grays, and the men were more orange and blue, ruddy colors. Um, so, now you notice I'm making the face wider than it really is. The back of his neck is very shadowed over here, and I'll come back in with the next layer and, and carve that down. Um, the nose, and don't get in here and try to do any real strong details yet. Just put an approximation of what you see. A little brighter here. Um, brighter here. She's pinker through the cheeks. And this little bitty brush is a challenge. I mean, this little bitty face is quite a challenge with this big, even number two brush. Just do your best to use the point where you can. Turn it on its side. Huh. I'll try to correct my angle on this as well. It's going to look crazy looking at first, so don't worry. Everything in me wants to get a little tiny brush out for this face. But I'm on purpose for your benefit and for mine. I'm making myself use this big fat brush. Today is block-in only. We are not doing any details today. Um, when I did workshops, every time with Shane, he had us use large filberts, four and six, especially on a bigger painting. And the very smallest thing we could ever use was a two, but that drove me crazy, even on a big painting. So imagine on this little tiny thing, how crazy it's making me. All right, now her arm and his arms, or the top of his hand there, are a much lighter version of the yellowish mixture. So I can go ahead and pop that on a little bit. Now I'm gonna come around it with the skin tone, so, I mean with the uh, suit. Top of his fingers is very light. her tips of her fingers over here, and I'll have to repaint those because the dress, the suit is behind them. Okay, that's all I'm gonna do right now. Oh, his hand over here, let me put a little bit of a tone on there just for the hand, just so you know that skin when you glance at it. Lighter back here, a bit lighter there just wrapping around and then her hand back here is is in shadow the back tip of 
her hand on his neck is in shadow. There. Okay, I'm going to get a clean brush because I want to leave that, that skin tone brush. And I'm going to go ahead and put in the suit first. The darkest dark that I see. And uh, that's not that dark. If I use that skin tone brush, there would still be light and white in it. So that is the reason I did not want to use that. I do not have enough. I've been using that pile, so I'm mixing in a little bit more blue and red. I could stand to use a larger brush on this. So let me grab my number four and see if I can mask this in. Dark is dark. Blue with a little red mixed in. See how much more mileage you get with a bigger brush than if I'm trying to use that little filbert, that little number two filbert. So look at the size of your area that needs to be covered and then make a decision based on that size and change. Don't get stuck. Putting my darkest darks in first. Remember, if it's not dark enough for you, if the blue is not dark enough for you, add some more red to it. All right, it's dark under her dress there. Dark right along in here. Here. Don't let yourself piddle. Just take it and cover it as fast as you can. If you have to squint to see these areas of dark, then just squint, squint, squint. And then it's very dark up here near his, uh, the neck. And I'm still drawing. So there again, that's why you cannot ignore your drawing skills. You have to constantly be drawing. The darkest area there. Dark under this sleeve. Dark all the way up to her wrist. Remember when you're working with this dark blue that if you let it dry with any kind of horizontal or diagonal strokes, it will have a lot of reflection in it. So you want to be careful about that. You want to take a brush and soften that out before it dries. Now the next part of his suit is lighter. And remember, it's more purple up here in the lighter areas and more blue-green down here in the pants. It's lighter here on the lapel. I will have to get a smaller brush up here. And then I'm going to go over here to a little bit of my blue green for down here on the pants you can see it's a lot lighter in this image i'm looking at this one lighter on the lapel and the jacket comes around like kind of like that. All right, this this leg bend is important. You don't want him to look too stiff. And I'm gonna go back to my dark because it's darker on the back of this leg right here. Remember, these legs are cylinders, so don't put all the same color on the leg. The light's going to hit it and create um, form and dimension, light, medium, and dark on these legs and elbows and arms. 
uh, dark here uh, on his sleeve and rolling that around a bit a little bit lighter on the back of his sleeve here and here along the top wiping my brush wipe 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 your brush don't forget and Follow this lapel around because that's important. The back of the neck, about here, the lapel, the jacket, kind of like that. You don't want him to look too chubby there. The one thing I noticed about this painting is there's a lot of soft edges. So I'm gonna continue with this large brush and work on her dress. So the dress color had a lot of lavender and I've mixed up more blue for right along the edge because this dress is catching a lot of blue from that from his clothing. Check your plumb lines. The wrinkle here is parallel. Comes right up along his ear. So it comes over a lot farther than I have it. The rhythm right here, and it's really very soft and blurred along the edge here. Blue along her, her bodice and bust line here. Under the arm, very blue. Under her, yeah, under her sleeve. Anywhere else I see it bluish. Maybe here under this fold. And down in some of these folds. Here. This one wraps horizontally. This one goes this way. These folds go this way, so go ahead and start modeling those in <clears throat> the direction they're going. Now I'm going to wipe my brush and I'm going to move to my more, this um, top lavender color that's got more red in it. And I'm going to start laying some of that in beside this. Look how pretty that is. Once this paint's dry, we'll be able to come back in. I may even let some of that green show through and just scumble some light color over the top. <coughs> A little bit too much pink in there, but that's all right. Uh, it's not going to glow up through there if you don't have any on there. So just put it in. Around the hand. It's a little more pinker in this middle section. A little bit there. Definitely some on the cuff here. A little bit on her collar. Along here. And definitely, and I'm going to get my little filbert that's smaller on this sleeve right here. It's pink. up a little bit of red and green to make a brown for the hair and the beard and I'm not real concerned about that it's a perfect brown but just mix up a little little brown to kind of mask that in I'm using the same color for his beard and I will make adjustments to this later but right now it's just the block in While I have that reddish brown on my brush, I'm going to go ahead and grab some of this red that I mixed up for her hat and lay that on. Go 
I don't know why red is always so much fun to paint, but it is. Now, there's a lot of ways you could go about painting this, and I really don't know how long Renoir took. Um, I've got to do some more research on his methods, but... I do know that this way works good for me because it makes, uh, it gives me a nice surface that's already covered with an approximation of the color and the value. And so the next time I sit down to work on it, and I've only been on this about 20 minutes, 15 minutes probably, because I stopped a couple of times with interruptions. Um, and that means I can come back in and, and do my correcting in my next session. And it's just a lot less stress than trying to do it all very perfectly the first time. And it keeps me, it, it, it makes me a little bit more painterly. It keeps me out of the piddling mode where I want to get in here and, and color in the lines. So the lightest lights are right along in here, and those will be fun to put in next week. And that's the only place that we see red. So there's a little piece of red back here. I guess it's the back of her hat. Now, will not be your most gratifying stage of this painting, but you can celebrate that you've got it covered. And I'm going to take a mop brush and just barely knock over the top, soften everything down so I don't have any globs of paint or any hard images, hard edges, sorry. I did add a shadow under the bottom of her dress. I want to flatten that out. Anytime you want something to lay down, you want to come back in with some horizontal lines and and make everything lay down flat because that is flooring there or ground and then um, up here around the features I want to just chip these together a bit and make sure everything feels soft for next week Still not sure I have, I did not really change the angle of the features much and they are like this. So I do need to change those. Go ahead and make a little place for that to remind myself for next week. <clears throat> Just get back from it across the room and see if the shapes and values seem good to you. That's all we're concerned about today, is shapes and values. This little tiny brush, I, I, look at me, I did it. I got down here to a size zero and a little soft brush, but I am trying to soften things down. My edges, there's no hard edges <clears throat> on this painting, so you want to make sure at this stage that everything is loose and soft and blurry. Okay. I can kind of chip these in a little, make sure I have these angles right. And I promise next week it'll be a whole lot more fun. Especially if you've gotten your drawing fairly accurate. I did put some purple 
blurbs or blobs over here just to mimic those the fruit or whatever it is that's on her head. And I do have some green showing through in places, but that's okay. You notice how the green showing through is kind of okay. So that's another reason, nice reason for the tone. It gives you uh, lots of grace. And sometimes it's a nice harmonious mother color that kind of ties everything together. This may be a little thin through there. Up. I just took all my flesh tones and put them in one pile here and then all my yellow tones I put in a pile here my red tones here purples lavenders and blues and greens I put in one pile for next week I do use clove oil in the tops and I replenished that recently so the paint is staying nice and wet for me uh, for weeks at a time so that's it reminder for those who are new to my classes I usually get most of the oil paint off with a paper towel and then swish them in turp and then I add some of this fast orange hand cleaner across the room and you can see just kind of squinting at it. Um, I can see the simple shapes. That's all I'm really concerned about is everything close and next week will be a whole lot more fun. And I push to make sure that all the paint is out. I usually clean them in my hand with that orange cleaner on there. And I'll leave a little bit of that cleaner in the brushes to keep them moisturized. And if there's a little bit of paint left in there, it keeps, them from, keeps the paint from drying hard. Um, I also like to use an old coffee can to put my turp rags in um, until uh, the garbage comes or until the, the turp evaporates out of them in case of any combustion issues. Okay, so one of the ways that I critique is by putting my colored image next to the original and I take a screenshot in preview uh, or then open it in preview. Preview has an option at the top that you can click on and adjust your saturation. Most of your viewers uh, picture viewers or photo viewers on your computer have an option where you can adjust the saturation and take all of the color out. So I like to move the color out of the way and look at it um, in only in values. That way I can adjust my values and my drawing at the same time. So I'm going to show you also another manual way to do that. If you want to even take a picture and use a photo app like Collage to pull your photos up side by side, the original photo by Renoir, and your, your painting or drawing at its current stage, and put them into two slots, you can do that, which is what I've done here, and I've printed it off in black and white and put it in a little report cover. So this is what I do oftentimes in class, just to show people um, how to correct. I have a T-square that I'm gonna use and I'm going to put the, use a few things, check a few things like plumb line. So um, I'm going to start with the plumb line down beside her face. And let's see everything that intersects with this plumb line. Take two here. So I'm going to measure using the original. And I want to make sure with this little T-square, if you don't have one, just make sure things are pretty well straight with the side of your paper. And plumb lines don't do you any good if you draw them crooked. So that just kind of gives me a place to start and check myself. And then I'll do the same thing here. 
on mine and see how close I got. So I can immediately tell that I have her waist too far in, pinched in too far. Um, and her face may could come over, this plumb line might come over just a tiny bit which is easy to do if you've used a dry erase marker. You can simply just wipe it off and bump the, the plumb line over just a bit. I did work with the plumb line as I was drawing this, so I should be pretty close. So I'm gonna move my plumb over just a tiny bit here to check it, closer to where I think it would be. Yeah, okay. Um, his nose looks fine. His chin maybe a little bit over. Um, but that really helps me a lot. I can, I can see right here my correction needs to happen here with her waist. This is more of a straight down. There's not so much of a bump out there, maybe a little bit. About the right amount of space skirt on this side. Uh, his hand comes over just a bit more. I can see that this back may come in just a bit and his hand may come over just a bit closer to that plumb line. So that's an easy fix. These are small things, um, but the, the plumb line doesn't lie. You can also see that his foot is a little closer to the plumb line. So, and I can see here that his pant leg, which would help here because this comes this comes over about like this, and that leg is maybe like that. And the foot extends out a good ways here. The heel comes in about there. So that's... Um, that's a really good way to do your correction and check. The other way is simply to find your standard measurement and use that. When you guys send me your drawings and paintings for critique, sometimes I'll come back with these lines drawn in Photoshop just to show you. Um, this helps me see how far off I am. So here's the back of his beard lines up with the front of this first ruffle. So back of his beard in front of the first ruffle. So that's pretty close. But one, And once I correct this, this area, like I've um, planned to in the last, set, in the last segment, um, I can also see that the side of his mustache lines up with her belt. Side of his mustache. And when I bring her belt over, that will correct that as well. Uh, when I bring the hand over a bit more, that's going to move this line and I'm going to have to move her mouth over her whole a little bit of her face over to get that to to be more accurate um, size of hat I didn't really even measure that but I can tell that I have some corrections to do here to get this hat uh, to look the same so what I'm going to do, and let me show you one other. Let's look at values for a minute. Um, so here's my value comparison. And it's a lot easier when you get that color out of the way to see how close you are on values. So I'll make myself some notes that I have this arm too light. Uh, this area is too light. It's not modeled at all, so I don't have the feeling of of, of a cylinder with it a little darker on this lower part of the arm. Um, it could be a tad bit darker down here and it, I don't have this light area on her back, which is drawing attention there. The values on the skirt are fine. Uh, values on his clothing are fine. This is a bit light, but that's easy to darken up. And again, the hat shape is out of whack. Her, I'll have to repaint her whole face the tilt of her face, moving it over, seeing what it intersects down here. So I think if I get it right along in here, if I follow the, her nose down, it comes right along her, her sleeve, her cuff, 
So if I move that over a bit, it'll be more accurate. The values on the hat and the hair are pretty close. Skin tone is pretty close. I have this too light in this area. So I can see that right off the bat. Once I get another layer of paint on here, I'll do the same thing. I'll take a picture and I'll put it side by side and grayscale both of them so that I can check my values. The background values, okay, I've got this shadow under the skirt a little bit too dark. Um, value on the red, which red is very hard to judge. Let's look at the color version again. It seems dark when you squint your eyes. Um, because this yellow is so bright, it looks too light. Let's look at it again. Um, it's not as light when you grayscale it. It's just the chroma of the yellow is so bright and hot, and there's a lot more cool shadowy tones in that hat. So um, I, I've definitely got lots of things. I'm going to narrow it down to the three things that I want to work on. I don't want to correct the shape of her body because it looks awkward right here, this curve. That's the biggest thing, number one. Number two is definitely her face and getting the tilt correct, correcting that tilt and value here. I like his face. I don't think there's much to correct on his face. The value's too light under the brim of his hat here, so that value has to be corrected, but the drawing looks okay. And let's see what else. Correcting his foot down here. So I would make a note at this point of the things you want to correct first while you're still fresh. And using some of the paint that I had left over, and I'll mix up a little bit more. But today shouldn't take a lot of paint because we're just doing some corrections. Okay, uh, I have I worked a little bit on another portrait the other night, so I have a little bit of skin tone mixed up, and I've just left it still nice and wet. My clove oil's working. Looks like I need to change this one out. It's getting kind of goopy here. So these are all still fine. Not sure what happened to that one. Um, I put some medium. This is Galkin mixture with uh, Gamblin Galkid, one-third, one-third walnut oil and one-third Gamsol, a nicer quality mineral spirits. Uh, you can mix it a little heavier on the Galkid side. The Galkid is a resin and that helps it dry a little faster, but I like this third-third mixture. I put it in a bottle cap and I, I like to use green or something different so I don't mix it up with my clove oil. One of my students has did that and took a really long time to dry. So I'm going to use a soft sable type brush. This one happens to be a filbert, but a flat would be fine. And I'm just going to do a light coat over the painting just to kind of do what's called oiling it in. So I'm going to paint a thin coat um, just to re-wet this surface. Uh, my first teacher used to call this um, she would go have a spray with retouch varnish, <clears throat> which was simply some medium and varnish mixed together, and it would just wet the surface just a bit. You want to make sure your painting's dry before you do this. See, I got a little bit of red that's still a little wet in there. Um, just go easy in an area like that, but you will smear it if it's still wet. So you don't want it soaking wet. You don't want it drippy wet. And you just want to bring your colors back up and you want to have that nice smooth surface to paint back into so that it doesn't feel like your brush is dragging. And if some of it smears, that's probably okay. I'm just going to warm it up a little bit. I do have my um, notes, the three things that I want to address. And I went ahead and redrew a little bit on this while my eyes are fresh to remind myself of what I wanted to correct first. Uh, I am going to mix up a little bit of a white tone for that dress. It will not be pure white. It will be a, uh, it will have some yellow in it. <clears throat> I already have plenty of cool tones to show through. So let me show you what I'm going to mix real quick. Again, I always start with my lightest light. And I'm going to be scumbling this color over the top. So I already have a little bit of a yellow ochre color mixed up. 
let's just start out with the bright yellow since you don't in case you don't have any mixed up that is way too yellow so I'm gonna just move up here with a little bit left on my palette knife this is going to be really bright so I'm going to grab a little bit of my lavender to just tone it down a bit there we go and since I like to have a couple of values of this I'm going to mix a little bit into this darker pile of yellow and that just kind of neutralizes it you see how that makes a nice interesting shadowy color there's a few areas where it's really, really light, and I'll adjust my values as I work more, but I may want to have another area out here that's for the lightest light. There's a couple of places on her dress, on her collar and her sleeve that are that light. So I've really got three or four different tones there. All right, so since I've adjusted that and put that gloss on there, I'm getting a little bit of reflection for the video. So I hope this is going to work. If you feel like it's too wet, you can always drag a little bit of a paper towel over the top just to, just to knock a little bit of that off. So I'm going to jump in here first with the, my biggest problem. And a reminder that I always clean my brushes in that orange hand cleaner. So I always swish them off in a little turp just to make sure I'm not painting with orange hand cleaner. I'm going to be using the same size brushes that I used last week, some number two filberts. I've got a large background brush out, but I probably will not use that. And I'll probably be getting into a small detail brush, a zero or a one, to work on the face today. So let me go ahead with a little bit of the shadow color and correct her waistline first and I don't want her looking too chubby here either so and that's a little bit more of a shadowed color remember we mixed up a purple for that area where it was just simply ultramarine blue and cad red and it leans more toward the blue side there we go actually grabbed a little bit of green by accident but that's okay okay now I also had this a little bit too wide so I'm going to grab a little bit of the green that I had left over and I'm going to bring her back in if I follow the rhythm around here just barely knock that off. It's so easy to make corrections now that we already have all this paint on here. There. This is at a bit more of an angle. We're going to move his, his sleeve. Let's see. His sleeve comes down from here. I don't think his sleeve is too far off. I'll go ahead and take a bit of that off. And let's see. And it's nice to have my notes here. So that I can remember what it what it is I wanted that's most important to fix, the hat and the shoe. So let me go ahead and do that while I have this green on my brush. See that already looks better. There's just so many small things we can do to make a big difference on a painting. I believe his jacket is okay. I could mix a little bit of this yellow here and don't get the jacket too long. Make a note of that. There we go. And then his shoe is a yellow mixture. And I want to bring the shoe over about that far and his let's see this shoe is going to come forward about a toe length so just 
just going to bring that heel over a bit. Remember to keep all your strokes horizontal on the ground so that everything lays down. Has a bit of a shadow color on the boot here. And sitting way back trying to let you guys see what I'm doing and it's a challenge to paint this way but we'll make it work. There's her foot right there. This blue is a bit light here. Okay, now the next biggest part that was bothering me was her face, of course, and I'm going to grab a little bit of skin tone, a darker version than I had, and I'm needing to move this face over here, keeping this tilt in mind, and her nose. Just drawing from the paint, from the uh, image, a little bit on her chin, a little bit on this cheek, a little bit on this cheek, a little bit on his nose, a little bit on his collar of a light tone while I have it. All right, and I can use a little of the negative space in between the two of them here to draw her face. So you see that that bonnet comes down below his nose, and that creates the side of her face. It's a little brighter there on the top next to his hat and the hat's going to come forward just a bit because remember it it overlaps the center line here just a tiny bit so i'm going to bring that over just a bit and that's probably about the lightest spot on on the hat or the most colorful spot All right, let me put a little bit of color in her cheek since I have some of that on my brush. And a bit over here. I know, it looks crazy. Don't worry. Just keep moving. Um, I'm going to put a little bit of a hint of her mouth in here. And then this pretty cheek line here, which is too light. Don't misjudge these values in the face. There we go. That's better. And that just kind of wraps around. There's a real pretty rhythm right here to her cheek. All right, so the color of the eyebrows, um, since we only have red, blue, and yellow, you can mix a little bit of a brown up with either red and green or blue and orange. Um, it's easier since I already have red out to go ahead and mix some red. And I do have some green from the background. So let me go ahead and start with that. I'll put a tiny speck of blue in it to get it darker. And you know if you mix all three colors you're just going to kind of get a muddy color. So you have to ask yourself if it's too blue it needs more red and yellow. But I just really want a shadow color right now for her lash line. And here's her. And a reminder that her eyes are uh, um, from her chin to her lash line, from her lash line to her hairline where the bonnet starts and then the bonnet to the top. 
is divided in thirds. So here to here, here to the top of the bonnet. Let me make sure I'm doing that right. Here to here, here to the top of the bonnet, or the top of the hairline and there to the top. So that's about right. One third of the way up is her lashes. Well, these little tiny faces, this is about the size of a nickel, her face, face is. So it's going to look really crazy at times. And as I've helped so many students try to fix these little faces, it can be quite a challenge. And it can be almost an accident when you get it right. But just keep pushing away at it. It'll, it'll eventually develop. It helps if you can paint straight on. All right, I've scooted in a little bit closer so that I can get in here and see, and I've enlarged the image so that I can see. I feel like if I get her face right, <clears throat> I can pull the rest of it off. And that's how I work a lot of times. I go to the most important part when I'm rested, when I first look at it, and get that right, and then I, I feel okay about the rest of it. The thing is, I don't want to make this face too big. <clears throat> and reminder to use your little softening brushes, which I'll be getting those out in just a second. The lash line is a, an arch going down, a downward arch. So even if you have to blur those out a couple times, that's okay. Make sure you have enough space in between the eyes here so she doesn't look mean. And I'm really not going to make you watch me paint this whole thing. I do want to show you a couple of important parts like the dress correcting the features on this tiny face and his hat. I think those are the main things I'm going to focus on today. She does have a little earlobe over here and that is even at the bottom of her nose. She's getting a little bit better. She's got a real bad bump out right here. I have a grand, no grandchildren today, but I have a grand dog, and so he's providing some background um, music for you. Some woofing. He works hard to stay on duty while he's here, make sure nothing gets us. So I'm going to go ahead and add a little bit. Now that I'm zoomed in, I can see this uh, raw sienna yellow ochre color on her bangs and a bit of that on his beard. I'm going to go ahead and pop a little bit of that in. There's some over here around these grapes as well. And on her belt. Do I see it anywhere else? His neck is kind of yellowish. Put a little bit of that on there. And back to my brownish color. Just to lighten. This is so dark on her bangs right here. I really overshot that. It's a little too dark. So I'll soften that up. Reminder that from her brows to her chin and from brows to the top of her hat is the second third. So you want to make sure you get those right. Now, um, I'm going to take a tiny little softening brush. This is one of those out of the cheapy sets, and it's got a little bit of dried paint on it, so I'm going to see how it works. you got to make sure you clean these really well. It's con completely dry, and I just want to barely soften, especially around this hairline, um, across these brows that are looking sort of vampire-like, across her mouth 
because I got a big Halloween wax lips on her right now. Just soften everything back out to a bit of a blur. I have her chin kind of cockeyed too, so it's all right if I kind of make that disappear. She's getting a little bit better. So if you can ask yourself with each stroke, is it looking a little bit better than it did? And it does. It's not there yet by any means, but it does look a bit better than it did a minute ago. She has a really sweet smile. And that will help a lot. These corners of this mouth need to be turned up. Little, it feels a little bit like a smirk, but it's, it's not. So pay attention to that. You know, the mouth is always so important. I've zoomed in and we all do this, but your brain wants to straighten this, this um, face up. So I keep wanting to pull this this way and I can see that I'm, I'm continually having to adjust. So this goes wider. This comes out this way. I can see how much space there is from her nose to her, from his nose to her cheek. There's a bit of warmth since I have it on my brush. There's a bit of warmth on the bottom of his nose. There we go. And that kind of shadowy color on the side of her face here, it mimics the side of the hat, this dark area here. It's like three, it's like railroad tracks right here. Let me see if I can go ahead and get this yellow hat moved over a bit. Keep a paper towel in my hand and I am wiping off constantly. There's this cool tone right here that I don't yet have. And that's pushing this head back this way. The bangs are going this way. The hat is going this way. A little bit of a cool tone here and let's see if I can get her eye in she's looking down at the floor a bit this is a tiny brush but all my brushes are wanting to split hairs on me today which is very aggravating her brow is at a strong upward angle, like this. And then this one is over here. It disappears into her hair. There, that's better. I'm getting a little closer. Sometimes you feel, <clears throat> you can feel that one brush stroke can help move you up a little closer. This is open here where her glabella is. This is at an angle here. This is quite light here. This may be a bit higher here. And she's really light <clears throat> right along the bridge of her nose. And here on her cheek. She's a little happier. <clears throat> it's still not her yet. Got a bit of that pink color. 
which is just my red and yellow mixture. There, now she's getting happier. Every, every stroke, she's getting a little happier. Get rid of that sideburn there. Give her a little bit more chin down here. Watch that tilt. Don't let yourself, your, the brain wants to straighten it up, but make sure you keep that tilt. And there's not a dark line right here, so I need to get rid of that. There is a, uh, a warmth right here that wraps around under her eye. Gives her a bit more of a cheekbone over here than I have. There. Okay, I'm going to stop for a minute because I'm getting tired. And I'm going to go ahead and use a little bit of a softening brush. One that's a bit softer to just clean a clean brush to just soften this in just a bit. So harsh. If you don't have a brush like this, just try to find the softest small brush that you have. Make sure it's clean and dry. And try to knock down these hard edges before they dry. Okay, so it's not her yet, but I'm a little bit closer. Let me work on him for just a minute. And what was my other area? The waist is corrected. The shoe is pretty well corrected. It needs some more detail. Let's work a little bit also on the dress. And after I do his face, we'll go next to the dress. And it will give me a little bit more of a... Um, masked in area for his face and cheeks. I don't want to get too too detailed right now because there's not much detail on his face. He just has some nice color right here that I don't have in yet. His ear is really warm. You can see a tiny bit of his lip. So these are all just very small simple shapes. And I'll go ahead and pop just a tiny bit of that in right here. Here. Do I see any warm at all down on his neck? Not much. So I do see, and I'm going to have to get small brushes for these hands. I did want to correct this hand before I move on. And I was moving it over just a bit here not hard to do. Just add some length onto it. His hand is pretty big. Remember, a hand is the size of a face. So make sure that you get it big enough. If it were to be extended, would it cover his face just above his eyebrows? All right, the lightest place on that hand, that's too light. is right here on this knuckle by the thumb. And really all you need to do is the negative space for these fingers, no real detail. Reminder that this is a much larger painting than what we're doing. So some parts of what we do will be impressionistic for sure. Then there's a bit of blue which I can, which can help me carve this hand down a bit. His sleeve, since I've got it zoomed in, I can see it now. And I didn't clean my brush, so I have some white on there, and it's dirtying up my blue. Now I will clean it this time and get a little bit of white for that cuff. Not pure white. It's a cool white. It's got some blue in it. There we go. There we 
ago. And there's also a bit of that showing through here. When I check the values, I'll see if that's too light. It might be. All right, so I have this re-wet. Um, I could probably work around in here to blend that a little bit with the clean brush. All right, just softening in some of that warm color I put on his cheeks and that little bit of raw sienna on his beard. I don't really have to do too much to his face. The green coming through works out okay. And <clears throat> a reminder that I had the arm too light. So as I come back in here to work on this arm a little bit more, I want to adjust my values and put some dark, more of a orange skin tone with a little speck of blue in it for the shadow color. I want to check the angle of this arm to make sure I don't make it too, I see that's too yellow or orangish, so it's going to have a little bit more blue in it. And warm his um, hand up just a little because I had a lot of blue in there. It's at this stage I don't want I want to be careful and not make the hands too big. Reminder that they're, they're not any bigger than this face. I still have this lavender mixed up, so I'm going to go ahead and put a little bit more of that on the sleeve and correct the angle. And this line is a little more flattened out here. So when you're working on um, a cylinder like the arm, you want to put your light, medium, and dark in longwise, and then when you come back, you can blend it the opposite way. Let's see. Her tips of her fingers are light. Two fingers here. And the area where her ring is is light. And then there's a little pinky on the top. So you're always constantly looking for um, negative space and shapes. Don't think about fingers, don't think about body parts, just think about what the shape is. And just make a mitten at first. If you, you know, don't don't get into the details until you have the the overall form right. Now if I blend that with my wet brush, I'm gonna just obliterate it. So that's why I go back to these little blending brushes and I'm going to kind of go back and forth a little bit to try to keep that value. Now her arm looks funny like she's got some fur or something on it so I'll go back around it with the blue and clean that up. I looked away for a minute. There's a little bit of skin tone right here below his beard and in front of his ear. And there's a little bit of light right here in front of his uh, whiskers.
So when you work on this mouth, just really focus on the angles of the corners. And think about the hands of the clock. We're going up toward 1 o'clock and 11 o'clock. <laughs> I really need a tiny brush for this because we're working on an area not even as big as a green pea. All right, let me show you how I fix this um, suit and finish up a few things. So now pay attention to this negative space under her wrist. So you can help define that area of the cuff and the arm by putting that really dark note down. Sometimes you have to do work on darks over and over to get them dark enough. And now that I moved her dress over, I can move his, the angle of his jacket a bit. If you're not sure how wide her arm should be, you can measure it at the widest point and see what it corresponds to on the face from the chin to about midway up the nose. Don't really have her nose defined very well, but it gives me an idea. So that's about right. I think I had it too big earlier. I have a little blue on my brush and I see blue around this hand. Now let's do a little bit on the dress and then I'll come back and show you my final version of this. All right, I'm, I'm using my mid-tone version of yellow that has a little purple mixed in with it first. And I want to note the lightest spots on her dress here, the top of her shoulder, the top of her cuff, right here on her collar. And there's a few spots on the top of each of these folds. So I'm going to start with those first. There's already plenty of cool tone already on here. I don't know yet how light this is going to be. So let me go ahead and make a stab. That's pretty light, pretty dull. And I would like to just try to scumble this over the top and not have to repaint everything. I've got a number two filbert. And these strokes are going on really bold, so I can come back in and soften them in a little so they're not so sharp. But the trick is to try to do them without a lot of effort. This is pretty light on this top part of her hip. Remember, as you go down on the figure, lower toward the bottom of the figure, the values are going to get darker. And remember the rhythm with this skirt as you wrap these strokes around. Now, I'd like to just use my finger. Yep, that's going to work. To gradually lighten some of these areas. I don't want to totally get rid of that cool tone underneath, so be careful when you start using your finger. It's big and it 
you can obliterate all your work that you did on the shadows underneath. It's almost like painting flowers. You want to find your uh, center and make all these strokes move towards the center. Or it's the same way that I paint flowers. Now I'm going to dip into my lighter pile and you're going to see the difference. So here's the lightest light. And there's a little red trim on her dress that I would probably wait until it, the painting is dry to go back in and add that. And since there's no canvas thread, there's a little bit of my zinser that made a a bit of a weave here. Sometimes you can mimic fat, the weave of a fabric by dragging the brush. Um, just side loading the brush right here in the belly of the brush and then just dragging it over the top. Just picking up the bumps from the canvas. And it'll look like a linen weave. It's pretty smooth here because it's filled with paint. but. Now on the bottom under her ruffle of her skirt is a real cool light. So I'm putting that on pretty wet. Now I'm going to take a bristle brush or I'm going to take one of my blending brushes that's not real, real soft. Try to wiggle that in. Because it's like tool. Okay, I'm going to work on this some more, and I'm going to go ahead and put a few accents in just to, to show you. When I'm looking at the background, I haven't done anything to his hat, so I definitely have some work to do there. But remember, this is two figures. There's a lot going on here, full figures from head to foot with really intricate clothing and... Um, just a lot going on, so give yourself plenty of grace with this. I'm going to put a bit of dark right behind his hat because I see that in the background. And that'll feature his hat a little bit more. And then there's some dark right in here by her hat. It's actually a face there, but we're going to leave that face out. And there's some more dark up here where they meet. And so sometimes you can put a light note or a dark note around the faces in kind of an asymmetrical way and it it just features your, it just kind of brings more focus to this um, focal point. And then there's light tones down at the bottom. So we could go ahead and put a few of those in, like near his leg. And down here on the floor. And think about um, design and things being more asymmetrical. 
when you place these little um, features, I guess you could call them. Don't put them across from each other like bookends. They won't look right. Just to make this skirt a little bit, stand out a little bit more. For the background, I try to keep my strokes pretty uh, vertical. And then when I move down here to the ground, I try to switch to horizontal strokes to lay it down. All right, it's getting dark, but I wanted to go ahead and pop a few details in here. This red that comes down along the side of her face, across her ear. Brightness of this red on the side. Okay, uh, this is my last session. I let it dry pretty much. It's still a little bit damp for a couple days. I worked on this Friday and today's Monday. And I wanted to show you, I took a picture of it, my most recent picture. I know there's still a lot of things off. Her face is looking pretty big, so I'm gonna have to carve that down a bit. But I wanted to show you how I pull this, this is on a Macintosh, my older computer, but I pull it up in preview. So I just click on it. It's the default photo browser. And I pulled both the original image up, Dance at Bougival, or Bougival, Bougival, I think is how it's pronounced, and then my picture. Now, it's hard to get them exactly the same size. There's probably a shortcut to my zooming, but it zooms in increments, and it's pretty close. Um, then I take a screenshot, which on a Mac, it is command shift and the number four. And then I'm just taking a screenshot of the two of them together. You hear a little shutter sound. And then I'm opening, I'm gonna X these out and I'm gonna, I've already opened up, I've already done this. So I opened up my screenshot, which is stored on my desktop. You can choose that default location on your computer for where your screenshots go. I opened it up in preview. Now I have already adjusted my saturation level, but I wanted to show you how I did that. So on most photo viewers, you have some options for, you won't always see them, but you have some options for photo editing on your viewer. Mine shows a little markup toolbar, it's called. It's like a little point of an ink pen. And you just have to go across on your buttons and try these out to see where your photo editor is. Then it has a text button, a fill color, a border color, shapes. Um, oh, there's a just size, so that would be probably what I needed. And that will the adjust size will let you pick a size. It has this, um, what's this called? Adjust color. So I don't need to lighten or darken it because I'm gonna check value. So I wanna come down here to saturation and I want to slide the bar on this particular program, you slide it to the left to totally desaturate your picture. And it leaves all the values and gets rid of all your saturation or color. Now I am looking at this on a monitor, so there's some glare. Let's see if I can get that glare out of here. But I wanted you to see um, 
at this stage, and usually about three quarters of the way through a painting, I will do this and check my values. My drawing, I uh, corrected in the last session for the most part. Her face is still not right. His face is a little large. This one is bigger by about a half inch. So I've got to take that into consideration. But you can see that these three wrinkles are too prominent and they look like um, ladders, step, steps on a ladder or something. They're very distracting. They don't look that bright on the color version, but when you grayscale it, you can see how strong they are. The rest of the skirt, with the exception of maybe this little bright spot here, is the values are pretty good. So I'll tone part of these down, especially in here inside the skirt area, or maybe lighten a little bit around them so they don't stand out so much. Um, her arm looks pretty good. It's still very much lighter than, than the original. And of course, her face is out of whack. Her mouth, I can tell right off the bat that her nose is not long enough and her mouth is too high. So if I bump the mouth down a little, elongate the nose and do a little bit of detail on the eyes, I should be in pretty good shape. The light on his nose is too light. It's really jumping out. So I'm just gonna correct that value. Um, this space, even though this is a little bigger, this space on his beard is too big. So it's a good idea if you can figure out how to get your, your photos exactly the same size, that would be helpful. But I could measure and see what this beard is the same as. That's, that, that's what we do when we have um, a different size source. If you're working from life, you definitely have to consider this. All right, so his beard, the width from his, uh, under his chin or neck area to the top of where the hair grows, is the same as her wrist. So I could come over here and check it. And it's about right. So I guess it's just that this painting, this uh, painting is larger than the original here. The hands look fair. I haven't done really any details. They're just blocked in. This hand looks pretty rough. So I could maybe darken this area of the hand and smooth it to where it melts a little bit back here. It's, it's kind of big as well. Uh, I can check that by checking from her pointer finger, the second finger next to her thumb, to the tip of her third finger. It's the same as from her eyebrows to the, her bottom lip. When I correct that, it'll be about there. So I can come up here. So the size of it's pretty close. Um, it's just the value that's standing out. The value on his hat is okay. It's a little bright right here. This hand is a little bright. I could tone that down. These features you don't want to stick out. So, and it does seem like her skirt is a bit fuller through here. So, although I can't see the end of it, um, it's feeling a bit pinched right in here. So I may add a little bit of a piece of something right in there. So anyway, this last session is just for, for quick problem solving and what are the biggest issues that need to be corrected. Um, her features, the value on his nose, the value on her hand, and a bit of correction on this hand, and then fixing these three ruffles. Um, I didn't do anything else to this shoe, and you note how this light spot is really jumping out. So when you knock off all that bright color and you just look at the value, it really helps you make those corrections. Of course, I did overshoot this, but that's okay. I kind of like it. And the darks are about the same value behind his hat. So overall, I'm, I'm okay with this. I zoomed in on my painting and let me revert this back to color. <clears throat> and compare the two and you can see in this zoom up zoom in that my nose is really too short and squashed so I've started uh, repainting her eyebrow and of course um, I've got the computer zoomed in so I can see what I'm doing but her eyebrows are really dark and they're a bluish color this one's a little warmer over here next to the outside it's got more red 
So I've mixed blue and yellow to make a dark green and then I put some red in it and I just had to keep tweaking it to get a brownish tone. Here's what I'm using on the on my palette. And I'm gonna keep working on this face. Right. So I can see since I'm zoomed in that I've got the angle of her nose. It needs to be this way and I'm a little bit down. Um, so I'm looking at the space here and I'm looking at the length of it. And if I measure it from her eyebrow to the bottom of her nose is the same as from the bottom of her nose to her chin. Let me go on up the face and see what else. Uh, bottom of chin to bottom of nose, bottom of nose to eyebrow, eyebrow almost to the hairline up here. So let's check it. So once I correct this eyebrow and I bring her nose down to about here, then I should be just about right. So eyebrow to bottom of nose, bottom of nose to bottom of chin. Now I'm going to go ahead and take off her mouth for the time being. Sometimes on a large portrait, that's real detailed. I do not take the whole mouth off. I just slowly move it down in increments. But I think it'll help me today to just remove the mouth and look at it, elongate this nose a bit. Remember that my angle needs to be, and sometimes I just have to hold, hold my brush up there and try to keep it at the same angle. It needs to be And I had enough paint left that I don't have to continually mix up. So that's a consideration. When you first mix your colors, try to mix up ample amount. Use the clove oil, put it in the freezer, whatever your method is for painting. Um, I'm using a little flat um, Lang nickel, an old brush of mine. It's a number two and it's a tiny brush, but it's working good. And then I'm going to switch to a more detailed brush in it. I'm reminded on this painting that I need to go buy some new detail brushes because they don't last very long. And I like to put a little circle on the end of the nose. Sometimes that helps me. All right, eyebrow to bottom of nose, bottom of nose to chin. So I'm really only extending the bottom of her nose and it's a bluish tone under her nose, which is kind of unusual. Typically, it's a, my blue paint's really wet, so I need to use a mall stick probably to keep myself out of the paint. Put a little blue shadow underneath there. And then moving her mouth down a bit. There's a blue shadow under her mouth as well. Again, let me just encourage you that these little mouths, these little faces and features are really challenging. They're so tiny that it's really hard to get <clears throat> get them exactly right. So um, I'm remembering where that mouth is. That's one problem of take, completely taking the mouth off because a lot of times you'll put it right back in the exact same place. All right, so that looks better. She doesn't have that smirk going on like she had in the other one. And I'm just putting a little red spot there right now for the mouth. I haven't, I'm not concerned with upper lip, lower lip, any of that. <clears throat> there is, should you put the lash line or the eyeball, what should you put first? So I go back to my common sense thing of what came, what's underneath, what came first. So I'm going to put a little spot about where the blue of her iris would go first. And then I'm going to go back in. And I think this will be helpful to you. Um, I'm going to go back in and use a little bit of medium with my dark brown. It'd be tempting to use black here, but black will be too harsh. And since I'm making a big mess here, let me grab my mall stick or some sort of a stick to lean on so that I'm not laying in my paint and the camera's in the way but let me see if I can get in here and 
just make these little marks for the top of her eye or lash line rather. Yeah, and that's about all she's going to get. I'm not going to try to get in there and really do details. This is an impression. Um, I've got her nose too wide, which will automatically make it look too short. So I'm going to come in here and lighten up. There is a light spot just down from her tear duct. There. That helped. Um, there's a light spot above her lip on this side and another one just below her lips on this side. It's light here. It's light under her eye and down the bridge of her nose. The tip the little ball of his nose is the only thing that gets that light. And then maybe a tiny bit more warmth on his face now that I'm zoomed in. He's got a real ruddy, warm complexion. Her skin is a bit more creamy and rosy and soft. And I've got her really, I don't have that right here. So let's see if I can fix that a little bit. And maybe I'm putting a little bit of yellow and red to get me that peachy color. She doesn't look happy. So the thing that's missing, and again, these little dots are about the size of a pinhead, and it's a warm, it's a warm note on each side of her mouth. Now, another quick thing I want to show you before I stop is how I clean off this mess I just made by laying in my blue paint. So I'm just going to get a clean brush with a tiny bit of turp on it. If you're working in acrylic, you won't have this problem because the blue will not be wet. And I'm just, oops, that yellow is still wet. It's okay. Everything is fixable. And actually may add a little bit of warmth in there that I don't have on her dress because I've got everything very cool. All right, a little bit of shadow color to fix the skirt area right here where her ruffles are. Let me move this one up as well. There we go. And use your computer, your laptop, or your iPad, whatever you're working on. Use that and zoom in. We forget that we have these wonderful um, tools that we can use. And there's a, um, if you watch some of Dan Gerhardt's, especially the last video I posted, he has some beautiful demonstrations of working these warm and cool tones together in a way that's not mixing the yellow and the blue to make green. It's just letting them lay side by side and kind of vibrate with each other. Really beautiful. So you always want to watch uh, repetition, strokes that are exactly the same. Um, that's always boring and monotonous. And, and let's see, I can tone down this one a bit so it's not so bright. And I was going to add a bit of something right in here. <coughs> All 
All right, so her ha uh, her hand and his hand both could be toned down a bit. They were too bright. So what color would I use for that? Let's see. And having them zoomed in here, I can really see if they're warmer. In one of the images that we studied, they were a lot warmer. So let me put just a tad bit of warmth on here. Paying attention to each segment of the set of fingers, the whole set. If you kind of look at it as two parts, the first set of knuckles and then the fingertips. Instead of trying to do each little finger exactly right. All right, and then I'm going to come back this way. Yeah, I like that better. And you see all four fingers here. But you don't want them jumping off the page at you. And that thumb is... There we go. I like that better. I'd rather just have a hint of those fingers anyway. All right, let's have a look at hers in the back. There we go. Whew, hers are a mess, so they definitely need some work. So what I'm seeing on the top of those fingers is some purple tones. Purple and flesh, so purple and orange. And I'm seeing those first three segments. So I've had plenty of purple left over. And then I've got this orangey color and I'm just mixing the two together. A little bit lighter on the second um, segment of, their, of the fingertips. A little bit lighter. But not near as light as I have them. And then this one's quite light up on this upper part. And then the, the lower part of the finger is darker. <clears throat> these on the outer side and I'm going to get a tiny brush because they're so small are very hot his thumb here is very very warm underneath her fingertip is warm There's a few warm spots on his hand around the knuckles. And I could go back in and pop a little bit of light on his knuckles because I did totally leave the knuckles out. So this is my yellow ochre color. It may have a tiny bit of purple mixed in with it so it's not so bright. So we got one, two, Three, four. A little bit on his wrist right here. And I smeared blue over here as well. So let me see if I can clean that off. Whoops. Okay, I'm going to fix down here on the shoe. I'm going to fix um, that real quick. And hopefully these only take you a few minutes at the end. You can see how much lighter that is and how off it is. So I could probably just glaze a bit over the top of it and kind of tie them together. I'm going back to my little flat number two. And a little bit of a blue-gray, tiny bit of, of blue mixed in with it. And try to fix 
this is kind of broken here, not connected. The heel has a light spot. The heel over here has a light spot. But this is just an impression, so try not to fret on it or work on it too much. Let's make it knock that real hard edge right there off so that it rolls around the side of his foot. And what will help it is a bit of a shadow underneath it. So let me get a little bit of a dark color. I'm not going to worry about that light tone. I don't have the angle right, but same thing over here. Bit of a shadow underneath it. Everything casts a shadow. And when you leave shadows out, things float. And you don't always see it when you're painting. So I think that's good enough. I think I'm going to overwork it if I do anymore. Once you put that shadow in, just soften the edges of the shadow so they don't look like a something underneath. Her shoe is really not showing up at all. It's mostly a bluish color. I can, it goes above his foot. I really don't have much room for it. Just put an implication of it there. She looks like she has, um, like she's biting her lip. So I definitely need to do a little bit more work on her mouth. But I'm going to wait and do that after I zoom in. So I'm going to call it quick. Last little pass, I am going around and comparing my values. Um, like on the arm here and I've gone a degree lighter than what's on there not too light um, just to adjust to drag it's kind of dry paint too I'm just barely dragging over the top to get and it gives it a little bit of a textured uh, feel like fabric anyway this is a soft filbert and I'm just barely dragging it over the surface to lighten that shadow color up that I've gotten so dark. I did that down on the skirt as well. I used some yellow and white and just kind of drug it back over my areas that were too light. Um, and it gave it a softer feel, more fabric-like feel. I think I like it better. And I'm looking at my uh, images side by side and Really, this is too sharp of a contrast. It needed to be worked in a little bit so that it wasn't such a hard edge on it. I like the value of it, and I don't want to get rid of that, but I wanted to work the, the edges in just a little with one degree darker. And I've used some lavender and a little bit of yellow, too, to drag over the tops of these. Now, that's where putting that nice dark in to start with really it does you a favor because then you can just drag over the top like this and get a whole different effect you can see down here that th this looks like fabric the way that i've dragged it over the top you just don't want to get too carried away so i'm doing this on the screen i'm looking at it and i'm looking at the way he indicated the petticoat down here so i might could come back in here and do a little bit of an irregular pattern to indicate some ruffled tool. Whatever you do, don't make it all the same. Turn your brush, vary it. Um, the, the painting is cut off, so you can't really see this part of the painting. I just made that up. say no but I like a certain size brush for signatures and I don't that's the one I'm out of so let me see um, I, I like to put the artist's name first so there's my R whoops I didn't have it on camera for you guys and I have to lay my my painting flat before I sign 
Shirley used to say, emphasize the downstroke. Smaller brushes you can get away with and lots of medium. Renoir. Renoir is what everybody across the board said as I watch videos. Like war, W-A-R. Um, I'm just going to put Renoir, st Renoir study. I've been saying Renoir so long. I have a hard time with that. Study. Again, enough having enough medium to get this paint to flow is a key. I got the S too fat. And then I'll just put my initials. And that's it. I always have people asking me about signatures. And I've done several demos on how to sign. Um, so let me come back in here and show you briefly how I fix. I get a clean brush with a little bit of wet turp on it. Not too much. Not so that I have a drop to fall off. And I just come back in here and clean these letters up. It's better to sign on dry paint. And this background here is dry. So your signature can is your logo, and it's what identifies you. It can wreck your, your painting if you have a bad signature. Um, and if, you, if your signature is not yet refined, don't worry about it. Just keep at it. But your signature is important. Don't leave it off. It is what authenticates your work. And I don't know if you've ever found a painting before that wasn't signed, but it's so discouraging because you want to know who did that. And there we go. I think that's okay. This is still a little fat around here, but you can always let it dry and also come back in with your background color. I've done that before or with pastel. I'll, sometimes it's not dark enough, so I'll go back. I'll sign it with a medium color, and then I'll go back and sign it a little bit darker later. And it gives it like a little drop shadow. It's not, it's not a bad effect at all. Here we go. Back up on my easel, and I, I tweaked my uh, initials a little bit more. And I wanted to also mention that to be sure and put the artist's name that you're studying from. Don't, don't put your name on somebody else's work unless you also include their name. And I'm going to write on the facing page some notes about Renoir that I learned. And it's just some, I think that'll be kind of an interesting thing to include. So I may go back in here and do something else later, but right now I'm calling it done.